We gaan naar onze volgende keynote speaker. Ik wil graag het woord geven aan Dr. Wayne Modest. Hij is hoofd van het Research Center for Material Culture van het Nationaal Museum van Wereldculturen. Hij voltooide nou research fellowships bij het Yale Center for British Arts, Yale University en de School for Museum Studies aan New York University. Hij is nou curator academicus en zijn werk legt hij een grote focus op slavernij, kolonialisme en postkolonialisme. Ik geef het woord aan Dr. Wayne Modest. I will speak in English and thank you for inviting me. I'll speak very slowly and I have 15 minutes, so, and I'll stick to it. Uh, about two years ago, I did an interview with somebody here. Um, I don't want to embarrass him, but he's here with Shari Langford. And we were talking about um, the question of blackness and art production. And Cheryl, during the interview, he used uh, a, a really beautiful statement, uh, which eventually became the, 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 cop, the, the title for the, uh, the, for the article in Small Acts, where he says that he wants to work as an artist in a space where blackness is self-evident. There's a self-evidence of blackness within the space where he works. That was within the framework of us speaking about what does it mean to be black in Europe? <clears throat> what does it mean to be black in the Netherlands? And is it possible for us to reach a space where blackness and citizenship doesn't seem to be um, intention, but rather that it is the same? Can I be a black citizen? Can I just be a citizen and be black? That is how I read the question of Zwarte Nederlands. I read the idea of, of, of black Dutch as a desire for a critical framework to think about citizenship and belonging to this space, to this nation state. And if it is one thing that I've learned since I've come here, which is just six years ago, so it's not so long, and I've not learned that much, is that the, there is still a tension between how we understand Europeanness, Dutchness, and blackness. A kind of exceptionalism, a kind of outside. And what this Black Achievement Month but also these kinds of conversations are intended to do is to make it von sprechend that one does not have to see them as contradictory, as moving towards, as the unending migrant who never becomes, who is always a migrant no matter what, but as a citizen. So it is within that framework that I'd like to locate Nancy's question to me, which is how do I see the cultural archive as having impact on cultural institutions or the heritage sector? And perhaps there is very, um, it is hard to, I, I, I will give a quick story that when I, and this is outside of the Netherlands, but it shows how um, we cannot speak, I think, no about the question within the Netherlands without being mindful that Brexit recently also marked a moment to think that people can still ask you, when are you going back to your own country? So in that regard, I will give this example that probably four, no, seven years ago, I had a meeting in the science museum, the big science museum, you know, the massive one in London. And I stood downstairs, I waited for the secretary to pick me up. And the secretary walked up to me, and she walked past me. And she picked up the man next door to me. And she said, Mr. Modest, come with me, please. And he said, no, I'm not Mr. Modest. And I said, I'm Mr. Modest. And he was the construction worker, and I was the curator. But she could not believe that I could have been the curator. But what was beautiful about the incident is that for the time between our <coughs> encounter and me reaching the meeting, she was apologizing for a long time. She <laughs> says, I could not believe that I did that. I am sorry that I did that. I should not have done that. 
Within cultural institutions as well, there, one cannot escape the idea that a lot of the cultural institutions that we've come to know have been built within the framework of this archive. We've been built within the framework of a certain logic of race and racialization. And for museums like my own, the ethnographic museums, we cannot escape the fact that within the Chopa Museum between about 19, 1900 and the 1960s, we had a massive space for Raskunda to study race. Therefore, and also that an institution like mine, like the one with which I work, has been, is not only emerges out of um, that colonial project or in tandem with the colonial knowledge project, but that it also um, um, is, was located in a notion of others. We were the display for the other, where you could come and see the other. So in that regard, a cultural institution like mine is the, the um, result of the cultural archive that Said spoke about. It is the result of the certain hierarchy of the colonial project. And one of the difficulty or the challenges or the exciting possibility is for us to think what might be done with such an institution and how might such an institution where that archive of the colonial is so embedded in it, how can it be mobilized to help to fashion another kind of Samaliki? That is how I would like to ask the question. But it would be remiss of me to only focus on an institution where the word race could have been used in the past. And while not calling any names, and it is good that um, Professor Wecker spoke of the university, one of the difficulties that we've come to, 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 to what, one of the things that we've come to do is that very often we've come to see the institutions that are so, or even the disciplines that are so spectacularly embedded in race or racialization as the ones that are complicit. And we overlook the other institutions and the other, um, 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 knowledge formations that are also a part of this. So if one were to look broadly at the heritage sector across the Netherlands, or, the, and I would want to say the universities, or the disciplines which we've come to know and which train us as curators, scholars, whatever, then one has to ask the question, how do we refashion the Department of History as well? or of philosophy, and how might we think differently about not only the Rijks Museum, uh, which we are, but, but also the, the contemporary art institutions as well. Because implicit in the work that we all do is an embedding of the hierarchies that we've come to know that are the bequest of the <coughs> colonial project. Many people speak to me and they say, because they think I'm the colonial man, that, but colonialism wasn't the only story. There were other stories. And for me, I find that, that not, it probably is true, I don't know, but my project is more focused. But I find it difficult to see Europe outside of seeing it as living the afterlife of the colonial. So when, we think of, when are you going back? I think of Stuart Hall's, I am here because you were there. That it is because of that early relationship of conquest and greed, of knowledge formation, that we've come to inhabit the form that we've now inhabit, that we live in as multicultural, multi-ethnic, however we want to call it. Um, Europe today. And so I tie Cheryl's, art, Cheryl's interview with an article that I wrote recently as well with a colleague, Anand Bikoning, around an anxious, what we call an anxious politics of the present. A politics which seem to think that our societies are in disintegration and that disintegration must be projected onto some other that is causing the disintegration. The other that lacks something and is coming to take something. And my demand, actually, and what I want to actually um, think with today, is 
is, is, is um, I'm going to do two things now and then I close. One is, is a plea, um, a, a small plea that I keep doing. Because I've been reading again um, the work, Anton de Combe and We Slides of Suriname. And recently, I was introduced to, um, I was looking at Cindy Kersenborn's film of Edgar Cairo, and also of Martinez Adima. And I've been trying to read in my very bad Dutch the work of <laughs> Aske And what, 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 has, what has troubled me, and I've said this already, but I'll say it again, Shire and I have conversation. What have troubled me is that there has been, for the last 15, 20 years, a very turgid, beautiful, intellectually savvy conversation going on around Black and Caribbean intellectual traditions, which I don't see happening here. There is a nice discussion where we quote Fanon, Cézanne, Césaire, Glissant, and we speak about how they have actually worked at a, at a decolonial tradition, an anti-colonial tradition. And their work are now established as part of a common way of thinking about the world, the, the, the post-colonial world. And that also includes people like Stuart Hall and um, Sylvia Winter, Derek Walcott. So one of the projects that I've started to do right now, and I'm, 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 I'm trying to do it, and I'm going to write three PhD positions in it, because I also want PhD to, to be a part of this. And the project is going to be structured around three frameworks. The first one is to ask the question, what does it mean that Anton Lecombe was here in the period of the 1930s, when George Padmore from Trinidad and C.L.R. James was in England, and all of them were committed to a black struggle, but also committed to a communist struggle. What does it mean to think that network of intellectualism that was trying to undo the colonial project in that first part prior to World War II? Then I want to move on, and I'm happy that Wendelin is here. Sorry to call you out. But what does it mean as well that there was a student movement of black students here that were articulated with other black students in the 1960s and 70s that were also articulating a kind of intellectual project and an anti-colonial project. And I want to close my project by looking, and the project that I'm writing, so you can know it now, is about black Caribbean intellectual traditions, it's about networks, and it's about questions of gender. It's about the political imagination. And so the last part of the project asks, what does it mean that we have people like Gloria Vecca and Philomena Esset in the present, who are also working in that similar form of intellect, radical intellectual traditions? Because at the end of this project, what I'm proposing is that what we will write, what we will ask, is what does the Caribbean intellectual tradition look like differently when Dutch Caribbean intellectuals are a part of it? And to ask that question, one, one of my challenges to you all here in this room is that when we speak about Zwart Nederlands, we also have to speak about the intellectual work that black Dutch people have been doing to try and end the anti-colonial struggle. Because if we don't do that, then we continue to name the names of everybody else without naming the names of the people who have structured an intellectual framework for thinking about what blackness means in the present. And that blackness is one that emerges out of struggle, to fashion hope out of struggle. And I'd like to, I've never met him, but I'd like to tie it to Jeffrey Pondag on, on the other side because he asked the question. Mm -hmm. Because one cannot actually understand that network moment in the 19, the, the 20s, 30s, without understanding that also there were a lot of intellectuals from Indonesia also here. Mm -hmm. 
So it is that project that we need to work on to try and think differently. My last, totally last thing, Nancy, as you showed me the one minute already, is to say that if the cultural archive that we've come to know is the bedrock for a lot of the cultural institutions that we have now, then changing them isn't going to be easy. It took 400 years to create it. It won't take two to undo it. But we have to commit to a project to make it change. And this is where I'm doing my blatant marketing. Because I've already said it um, to Antoine that next year, hopefully on March 5, we want to start a project that looks at, in the museum that looks at questions of Pan Africanisms. And the reason for starting that project is that Ghana would have been 60 years on March 5. And therefore, we want to invite all of us to think together about what that might mean. Why I say that to invite you all is that you have to inhabit the institutions in order to change them. You have to do what I guess Gloria is doing now with her shoulders bent low because the pressure is hard. But you have to be a part of the institution. You can't stay outside and expect that it is going to change. So I invite you in a takeover to be a part of changing it. Last, last point? Last, yes. <laughs> My last, 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 last point is a, a thing that I'm thinking about because I think we should try and, and it goes back to one last question, I think we should try and unpack the question of solidarity a little more. Mm -hmm. Because for the rest of the day, I think we need to think about what it means. We would have learned from Shengor, um, but we also know that the specificity of what happens here in the Netherlands is important for us to think with. I always tell people I think with the Caribbean because it's a specific <coughs> way of thinking. So we have to think of what it means to be solidary, but also still think specificity. And I'm going to make a really terrible quest, um, statement right now. Within our space here, we also have to think, what does solidarity work look like when it also includes non-blackness? Because I think we have to, we're not going to win the battle by ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we need to think about what it might mean that, so, that people are solidary with us, mm -hmm. even though they're not share the same genealogy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.